Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce this lecture in uh, Princess Fatma uh, Center for uh, Medical uh, Continuous Medical Education. Uh, our lecture will be about the uh, COVID-19 challenges in nephrology. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Muhammad Salah uh, Zaki, uh, Professor of uh, Nephrology and uh, Internal Medicine at the National Institute of uh, Urology and Nephrology. A quick introduction, coronavirus disease uh, 2019 or COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2 or uh, SARS-CoV-2. The disease was first identified in December 2019 in Wuhan, the capital uh, of uh, China's Hupi uh, province and has since spread uh, globally, uh, resulting in the ongoing pandemic, uh, reaching more than 200 countries till now, where uh, 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 there is around 1.2 million confirmed cases uh, with almost 60,000 deaths worldwide with an overall mortality rate around 5%. Uh, this diagram here can show us the um, zoonotic uh, origin of coronavirus. Uh, there are different coronaviruses uh, discovered, uh, uh, like the SARS one, who it was discovered in China 2003, and uh, the MERS uh, coronavirus in 2012, and the current uh, COVID. Uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, 2019. Uh, the, the, the ongoing uh, COVID-19 outbreak is caused by the SARS-CoV-2, which is showed to be uh, 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 the, to, to have the uh, bat, uh, different species of bat, as the uh, primary host, and uh, those uh, uh, these viruses. Uh, may, might need uh, an intermediate host. Usually it was uh, thought to be the pangolin, uh, but now there are some evidences that there is, there is a, a bat to human uh, direct uh, infection uh, route, which is uh, a characteristic or a unique character for uh, this uh, virus. Structure of coronavirus, it's a large pleomorphic spherical particle with the surface projections or spikes. Its diameter is around 120 nanometer. The envelope of the virus in electromicrographs appears to uh, be uh, uh, in, in, in a very distinctive uh, uh, pair of electron dense shells. These spikes latch onto the human cells, then undergo a structural change that allows the viral membrane to fuse with the cell membrane. The viral genes can then enter the host cell to be copied, producing more viruses. Recent work shows that like the viruses uh, that caused the uh, SARS in 2002, uh, coronavirus uh, uh, COV-2 SARS spikes bind to ang angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptors on the human cell surface, which is an important feature that we will discuss in details later. Here we can see uh, three diagrams or three photos. The first one on the left side, the upper one on the left side, it's a 3D simulation of the virus, uh, taking the data from uh, uh, electron microscope and uh, two-dimensional electron microscope and putting them into the computer, giving us a simulation of the virus particle. Uh, the uh, lower left one shows the real photo or picture of the virus underneath the uh, electron microscope, while the draw here uh, shows the uh, envelope protein and the nucleocapsid protein and RNA of the virus. The spike projections, uh, the, uh, uh, the, which are uh, protein spikes, and hemagglutinin strase uh, dimers, besides the membrane protein. So this is what the virus uh, is constitu constituted of. Coronaviruses constitute the subfamily Orthocoronavirini in the family Coronaviridae, uh, order uh, Nidoviralis and the realm 
uh, ribovirea. They are enveloped viruses with a single stranded RNA genome and a nucleocapsid of helical uh, 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 symmetry. The genome size of coronaviruses ranges from 27 to 34 kilobases, the largest among RNA viruses. And the name coronavirus is derived from the Latin corona, meaning crown or halo, which refers to the a characteristic uh, uh, appearance uh, reminiscent of a crown or a solar corona around the uh, virions when viewed under electron microscope due to the surface uh, being covered in club-shaped protein spikes. The discovery of coronaviruses were first in 1930s uh, where they caused uh, uh, acute respiratory infection of domesticated chickens called infectious bronchitis uh, virus, IBV. In the 1940s, there was mouse hepatitis virus and transmissible gastroenteritis viruses. Uh, but the first human coronaviruses were discovered in the 1960s with the earliest ones studied were from human patients with the common cold human coronaviruses 229E and uh, uh, OC43 and as we all know that coronaviruses usually constitute almost 30% of all uh, cases of uh, uh, influenza, viral influenza uh, every year uh, uh, the, uh, the, the seasonal influenza that we all uh, know 30% uh, of them usually caused by coronaviruses other human coronaviruses have been uh, identified ever since Example, SARS-CoV in 2003 in China, uh, Hong Kong U1 in 2005, MERS-CoV in Saudi Arabia in 2012, and the current SARS-CoV-2 in 2019 again in China. Most of these uh, have uh, involved in serious respiratory tract infection. The mode of transmission, person-to-person -person spread between people who are in close contact with one another within about six feet through respiratory droplets uh, produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. These droplets can land in the mouths or noses of people who are nearby or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. And people are thought to be most contagious when they are most symptomatic, the sickest. Some spread might be possible before people show symptoms, and there have been reports of this occurring with this new coronavirus. Another mode of transmission is spread from, uh, from contact with contaminated surfaces or uh, objects. It may be possible by uh, touching a surface or object that has the virus on it and then touching their own mouth, nose, or eyes. That's why we should all wear gloves when dealing with uh, uh, surfaces uh, that might be uh, touched by others. Again, a third route, which is the community spread, means people have been infected with the virus in area, including some who are not sure how or where they became infected. SARS-CoV-19 seems to be spreading easily and sustainably in the community in some affected areas and unfortunately a breaking news uh, two days ago uh, said that the experts told the white house that coronavirus can spread through talking or even just breathing by micro droplets that's why it's aerosolized and it became an airborne so it sustains in the in 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 the, in, in the air for around four to five hours even uh, after uh, the, the person coughs or speaks or even just talks and the virus uh, remains in the air and uh, the contagiousity uh, is still there which is a very um, uh, bad news uh, that will make the uh, outbreak uh, go more and more unfortunately. Immediately after that, uh, warnings came from uh, on the uh, from the uh, medical journals uh, on the Medscape, uh, showing that uh, the question uh, is 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 it time that we all start wearing masks? And they 
uh, almost or most of them uh, emphasized about uh, the importance of mask wearing in such epidemic even if you are not uh, infected symptoms and signs reported illnesses have ranged from mild symptoms to severe illness and death for confirmed COVID-19 cases. The most common symptoms are fever, cough, and shortness of breath. People may have the virus for two to 14 days before having symptoms in some cases. Older adults and people who have severe underlying medical conditions like heart or lung disease or diabetes seem to be at higher risk for developing more serious complications for COVID-19 illnesses in adults the emergency warning uh, signs could be dyspnea, persistent pain or pressure in the uh, chest, new confusion or inability to arouse and bluish lips uh, or face. This is a quick comparison between coronavirus or uh, infection or COVID-19 uh, infection, common cold and uh, flu or uh, uh, influenza, uh, ordinary influenza. Uh, viral influenza infection. The most important uh, between uh, comparison or uh, the most important differences between uh, the three of them is the fever, which is high in coronavirus, cough, which is usually common and usually it's dry, and uh, shortness of breath, which is a characteristic of coronavirus, which uh, and not uh, present in the other uh, two types. So, when, of course, sore throat is also important. Uh, sometimes diarrhea, uh, headache uh, also is important, but the most uh, uh, characteristic uh, symptom is the uh, fever, cough, and shortness of breath. For a, a quick test, if you want to do a quick test or you ask the patient to do it, is to hold his breath for uh, 30 seconds. If he could hold his breath for 30 seconds, then the patient is usually, most probably does not have a COVID-19 infection. If the patient could not hold his breath for uh, 10 seconds, then this is uh, most probably a COVID-19 uh, infection uh, in between is suspicious. Prognosis among all cases reported in different countries, especially European countries, disease course as follows. Uh, 70 to 80 percent of cases were mild or even asymptomatic. Hospitalization occurred in 20 to 30 percent of cases and severe illness requiring ICU and or respiratory uh, uh, support accounted for 4 percent of cases and among hospitalized cases death occurred in 12 percent of cases among the hospitalized and it around uh, 3 to 5 percent of the uh, general uh, number of patients who are not uh, the, the general number of patients who are confirmed uh, for COVID-19 infection, whether hospitalized or not. Prevention. According to the CDC Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, we have social distancing, which is remaining out of the congregate settings, avoiding mass gatherings, and maintaining distance approximately six feet or two uh, meters from others when possible. Isolation, the separation of a person or group uh, of people known or reasonably believed to be infected with a communicable disease and the potentially infectious from those who are not infected to prevent spread of the communicable disease. Isolation for public health purposes may be voluntary, lay self, or compelled by authorities. Quarantine is the separation of a person or group of people reasonably believed to have been exposed to a communicable disease, but not yet symptomatic from others who are uh, who has been who are not being uh, so exposed to prevent the possible spread of the uh, communicable disease. So this uh, this is the core of our lecture, which is should we. Uh, and should we, nef uh, as nephrologists, be uh, concerned or worried about uh, COVID-19 infection, why and to what extent, and the emerging impasse of angiotensin uh, blockade. 
This is a very important article by uh, Giuseppe Rimuzi. We all know Rimuzi is a very well-known figure in the uh, world of nephrology. And being Italian in Milano, where the, the, the highest infection and burden uh, rate in, in the entire uh, globe happens there, so they can give us a good uh, insight about what's happening there. Well, there are many challenges for renal services because, as we said, patients at increased risk of complications are considered to be those above 65 years, those with chronic respiratory, heart, liver, or kidney disease, nephrotic syndrome, and established renal failure, diabetes, hypertension, and immunocompromised patients. Patients with pre-existing CKD will be at increased risk of AKI, acute kidney injury, through pyrexia, poor fluid intake from anorexia, and sore throat, diarrhea, and non anti-inflammatory drugs used by patients for treatment of myalgias and headaches. What are the challenges? We have staff challenges. The staff challenges is uh, up to 5% uh, of the work uh, force may require time for uh, time off from work at some stages even uh, over the entire period of uh, a pandemic, which might be due to personal infection uh, or to provide care for dependents, whether ill relatives or children uh, due to uh, school closure, or uh, fear of exposing self or uh, family to infection and or practical difficulties in getting to work when there is, for instance, no transportation. Nephrologists, because they have general skills, might be in, needed to help out in other clinical areas, example, ICUs. All elective inpatients and non-urgent outpatients activities should be canceled during a pandemic to reduce unnecessary load on hospitals. It is suggested that uh, the, the small dialysis units uh, with 5 to 15 uh, staff only, staff members only, uh, or uh, small teams within larger organizational units are likely to suffer more staff absence up to 35% uh, over a two to three weeks uh, period uh, uh, during the uh, uh, local uh, 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 pandemic uh, uh, peak. Flexible and extended work uh, rotors will be needed to cover staff shortage and emergency uh, workload. A pandemic will put staff under pressure, likely resulting in conflicts between staff's professional and personal uh, or family responsibilities. Hemodialysis challenges, the International Society of Nephrology, the Chinese Society of Nephrology, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the Egyptian Society of Nephrology and Transplantation published, published interim guidelines for outpatient uh, hemodialysis patients during COVID-19 pandemic. The priority is the early recognition and isolation of individuals with respiratory infection and for the staff, the use of personal protective equipment, example, surgical masks, gloves, protective goggles, face shields, and aprons, as in all healthcare settings, with the use of N95 respirators and other respiratory uh, project, uh, protection devices during high-risk procedures is the highest priority. This is the site of the ISN showing the uh, guidelines that I will uh, uh, say it uh, now. Patient management, according to ISN, all patients should have their temperature monitored on arrival for dialysis. Patients and accompanying persons should be given hand sanitizer while entering the dialysis room. Patients should avoid meals during dialysis. They can bring convenience food such as candy to prevent hypoglycemia. If a new confirmed or highly suspected case of COVID-19 infection in dialysis centers uh, uh, was identified, this infection should be carried out immediately 
areas in close contact with these patients should not be used for other patients until cleared and the medical waste from confirmed or suspected patients with COVID-19 infection should be considered uh, as infectious material uh, wastes and uh, disposed accordingly. The health department should be notified in instances of suspected or confirmed COVID-19 infection. The asymptomatic patients with, uh, were re-examined at least twice for SARS uh, CoV-2 nucleic acid detection of SARS-CoV-2 antibody and chest CT after 7 to 14 days. If nucleic acid appeared to be positive and the uh, antibody became positive or CT scan showed pulmonary uh, progress, the patient would be transferred to a COVID-19 designated hospitals. If the re-examined patient showed negative nucleic acid, negative antibody and improved pulmonary imaging, Radiology and respiratory experts were consulted to exclude the diagnosis of COVID-19 and the de-isolation uh, uh, should be done after 14 days of dialysis in isolation zone and these patients go back to the normal dialysis process. All patients who have fever should be screened for novel coronavirus infection and should be given dialysis in the last shift of the day until COVID-19 infection is excluded. Pass route for entering hospital and dialysis unit, the pickup and the drop-off should not be shared with other dialysis patients. Entering and e exiting with other patients at the same time should be avoided. Precautions dialysis unit patients should not be in close proximity with a space of at least six feet between patients. Treatment and waiting uh, areas should have been uh, uh, should 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 have good ventilation. Uh, and what we did in the National Institute of Virology and Nephrology, for instance, is that we made spacing between the shifts so the, the the shift ends and the next shift will not start before at least one and a half to two hours. So giving a full space between two shifts to evacuate the entire uh, ward uh, or dialysis ward from all the patients and uh, give them the space to uh, not to uh, inter intermingle with others and not to make any crowdness and to di disinfect the uh, unit between the two shifts and then the new shift comes uh, on a clean uh, uh, sheets and clean ward without making a, a jam between uh, all these patients. Personnel, all personnel involved in direct patient care should undertake full protection, including uh, long-sleeved waterproof isolation clothing, hair caps, goggles, gloves, and masks, surgical mask grade or above. Hand hygiene should be strictly implemented. Dialysis machines, equipment that may come into contact with patients or potentially contaminated material should be disinfected according to standard protocols. These are the recommendations in the American Society of Nephrology for uh, the care of hospitalized patients with COVID-19 and kidney failure requiring renal replacement therapy. Indications to start RRT are similar to other patients with a, a acute kidney injury. Accumulating evidence suggests that a delayed renal replacement therapy initiation is safe, but this area is controversial. Loop diuretics may be used in the management of volume overload per uh, treating physicians' uh, discretion. If patients develop indications to start renal replacement therapy or if an end-stage renal disease patient needs a dialysis catheter for vascular process, this will be uh, placed by an ICU provider or nephrologist with significant ex expertise in placement of central venous catheters. Chronic renal replacement therapy machines, if available, are preferred over uh, intermittent hemodialysis in settings of uh, biocontaminant uh, isolation as uh, intermittent hemodialysis requires one-to-one -one hemodialysis nurse support. In ICUs, if there is an ICU uh, nurse we have with, uh, which is trained and competent for using of CRRT, this will reduce the workload on uh, regular hemodialysis nurses. As we said, Wuhan was the center of the uh, outbreak or the pandemic it started there so it's very wise to take their experience to know what they have done during the peak of the pandemic in Wuhan this is uh, published in the clinical journal of American Society of Nephrology 
under the name of lessons from the experience in Wuhan to reduce risk of COVID-19 infection in patients undergoing long-term hemodialysis. Firstly, they, they did triage of or a pre-examination or pre-examination of the patients. They requested that all patients and their families wear disposable, uh, disposable, uh, wear disposable surgical masks. If they did not have masks, they uh, supplied them uh, with the masks. Uh, they took the temperature of each patient with a temperature gun in waiting room or at the entrance of the reception room and inquired whether there was only a, a epidemiologic contact history and whether they were keeping each other at arm's length. So there should be uh, at least an arm's length between the one who's uh, pointing the gun and the, the, per the person who's being uh, tested or temperature tested. If there was no fever and no contact history, the patient could proceed to normal dialysis treatment. If the patient had an abnormal blood, body temperature, he would be measured again with a mercury thermometer or ear thermometer. A patient with a temperature more than 37.3 would be sent to COVID-19 designated hospital for diagnosis and treatment. If he, uh, if it, uh, if he was excluded from COVID-19, the patient could come back for routine uh, dialysis ward. Then regular hemodialysis patient management, patients with normal CT and, and no symptoms could proceed to dialysis according to the routine medical procedure. If the CT scan indicated non-viral pneumonia, the patient underwent routine dialysis, the patient was rechecked with CT after treatment and would be sent to the fever clinic if there was no progress. If the CT scan indicated viral pneumonia associated with fever and respiratory symptoms, patients were assigned to COVID-19 designated hospitals for the detection of SARS-CoV-2 nucleic acid. If, the, uh, if, he, if he tested positive, the patient would be transferred to the COVID-19 designated dialysis centers. Critical patients with COVID-19 and uremia were sent to isolation wards in COVID-19 designated hospitals and they were treated with continuous renal replacement therapy uh, separately. If there were several critical patients, they would be uh, concentrated in one or two isolation wards for unified management and the continuous renal replacement therapy. If patients were suspected of having virus infection on CT scan, but did not have obvious symptoms, patients were sent to the fever clinic for at least two SARS-CoV-2 nucleic acid tests. If positive, the patient would be transferred to dialysis center in a COVID-19 designated hospital. If negative, the patient would be scheduled for dialysis during the last shift of each day in a relatively isolated area on the fixed machine. The patient was managed by separate medical staff with standard protection with close uh, attention to the symptoms, the terminal disinfection was done after treatment. If the patient had fever or respiratory symptoms, he or she would be assigned to be uh, to a, a designated uh, dialysis hospital for uh, diagnosis and treatment. And this is the algorithm for Wuhan uh, Dialysis uh, uh, Center, uh, the one we are uh, talking about. We were talking about now. This is uh, the precautions for respiratory virus samples, uh, collection and handling. Uh, the most important is uh, before taking the sample is to inform the patient about the way of taking the sample, inform the patient that the uh, procedure might cause uh, minimal, uh, for, for the nasopharyngeal swab of course, might cause minimal irritation or distress. Ask if there is any uh, nasal blockage and give the patient tissue so he can use them in case of coughing or sneezing. While for the, uh, the, the throat swab, uh, the import, uh, rem please remember to, uh, before taking the sample, to inform the patient about the way of taking the sample and inform the patient that the procedure might cause gag reflex, give the patient tissues so he can uh, use them in cases of coughing or gag reflex. Kidney transplantation challenges, it is unlikely that there will be staff and hospital uh, resources during a pandemic uh, of kidney transplantation uh, programs to operate. Given the multiple personnel involved in the renal transplant, 
and the pressures on the hospital facilities, particularly beds and critical care, and the enhanced risk of infection acquired in the peri-procedural uh, period. It is likely that transplant programs might be temporarily uh, suspended. People with a kidney transplant need to take anti-rejection immunosuppressive medications, uh, which reduces the ability of immune system to fight infections. It is important to keep taking these medications, yet tedious adjustment of, those, of doses would be necessary to prevent over-immunosuppression. It is also important to wash hands, maintain good hygiene, self-isolation, and follow the recommendations from healthcare team. For kidney transplantation recipients diagnosed with COVID-19, if he has normal kidney function test and who is in home quarantine, Therapy with levofloxacin rather than azithromycin is recommended after careful evaluation by the physician to avoid drug interaction with calcineurin inhibitors which might require empirical reduction. Adequate hydration and the use of paracetamol in cases of fever for non-hospitalized patients might maintain the least possible dose of steroids if the patient was on steroid-containing protocol and for hospitalized patients, steroid use is controversial, so it is suggested to apply the most con uh, conservative measures uh, possible regarding the use of steroids. In some instances, it has been suggested that calcineurin inhibitors and mTORs uh, can be discontinued and replaced with the protease uh, inhibitors, lopinavir and ritonavir, suggested as treatment of COVID-19 to avoid patient uh, potent do, uh, drug interactions between them. Yet, the benefit of these medications is not yet confirmed for COVID-19 treatment, so it is not wise to uh, reduce the dose uh, to give a medication that's not confirmed uh, as a potent medication in this uh, outbreak.